Right, morning, there's Mr. Palmer here, uh, transaction processing. So the last video in the series on relational databases for AS level, right? So the big question, what is transaction processing and what is the impact of this on data integrity? So transaction processing basically is about carrying out transactions and transactions are indivisible, individual operations that come together to form a part of a larger exchange, okay? So for example, if I'm buying something from Amazon, I've got to sell it in my item, that's one transaction. I've got to add it to the cart, that's another transaction. We process the checkout, that's another series of transactions, we're going to enter the details, got to enter my credit card um, things, I've got to verify by Visa, then once that the payment is taken, etc. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of small transactions within that. Then the item is retrieved in the warehouse, that is then packaged. Once that status is updated, then it's delivered, and when that's successfully delivered, then the whole unit itself is complete. Okay, um, just the the process of checkout could be considered to be a, a transactional unit as well, because if one step within the whole transaction fails, the whole unit fails. So, if, sorry, if one transaction within the whole unit fails, then the whole process is a failure, okay? So, uh, in terms of um, the, uh, relational databases, we need to make sure that we are, um, carrying out, we are carrying out transactions, basically, in order to um, handle data um, and in order to keep our system functional, right? Um, transactional uh, pro transaction processing is slightly different to real-time processing, because real-time processing, if you remember, is about getting an instant... Uh, or an almost instant um, a response to the system, whereas transaction processing is um, uh, things that are planned in advance, okay, and you don't necessarily need an, uh, a real-time response on what's happened. So um, CRUD refers to the basic functionality of a relational database. So CRUD actually stands for Create, Read, Update and Delete. They correspond to the following commands on the right-hand side in SQL, okay, structured query language. Um, so uh, the ones in red refer to commands that actually carry out uh, transactions, all right, because you are changing the state of the data, the data set. So data integrity, if you remember, is about maintaining consistency in a database, okay. Um, so transaction processing has to make sure that we are maintaining data integrity, that when we do that, then the data is as we intend it to be, and therefore it represents real world conditions. And if the data represents real world conditions, that means it's fit for purpose and the data set can be used, right? Uh, things that can corrupt data um, and cause transactions to fail, things like hardware failure, your disks fail, um, you know, memory fails, etc. Uh, software error, bad programming, and things like power supply interruptions, because if um, the power supply fails, transactions don't carry out the way they're supposed to carry out, then um, the data set can then become compromised. Yeah. So another thing that um, need, we need to bear in consideration when we talk about transactions are this database security. So if you remember this um, this uh, diagram of the view, uh, the levels of a, of, a, of a database, okay, the physical level, logical level, and the user level. So the applications level where you have the different views that uh, that a user may have of the data um, that allow them to carry out their job. Well, data security needs to be maintained as well um, in order to enable transaction processing to um, take place safely. And some of those methods are things like access control, authentication of the user, locking records so that they can't be modified by two users at the same time, and obviously views like I just talked about. Now, imagine uh, I had my bank, okay, with three different branches. So this is my bank, okay. Each of my branches, branches is obviously connected. To the, so the ATMs and the systems within branch are connected to my main head office, okay. So there you are. You've been doing your paper round, okay. Feeling kind of rich. You just got paid by the news agent, okay. You got two hundred and fifty pounds in your bank balance, and you're going out for the eat for the weekend. You're going to do a little bit of shopping going to Westfield, whatever it is, right? So you go to branch number one, you withdraw 100 pounds, okay? And then you're, you know, out and about and you're enjoying yourself, okay? Your balance has gone down in the meantime to 150 pounds on the head office database. You quickly stop off at branch two and you draw out another 150 pounds. You're like, you know, hey, we're going out, going to spend some money, you know? So um, your balance now gets updated to zero pounds. So when you go to branch three and you actually try to withdraw further money because you, um, you know, you really are having the time of your life, that transaction is denied and it says, yeah, you can't um, have that money. 
Now, let's actually think about that in the real world. What might happen when, in terms of maintaining um, data integrity? And we talked about those things that can compromise data security. So there, I've got my three branches. Okay, you've been paid, right? Go to branch one. You draw 100 pounds. Balance goes down to 150. While you're there, right? In the meantime, um, the network goes down. Okay, branches can't update. Uh, their transactions with the main database. So you've gone over to branch two, you've drawn £150, you realise that uh, the, the the network's gone down, okay? So you quickly scoot over to branch three and you also draw £150. When everything comes back online, okay, both of those branches are going to update the, the new balance to say it's £0. So therefore, uh, you know, you've just gained yourself a free £150. So you can see here about how... Um, uh, about how uh, things can uh, compromise um, the data integrity. Now, what we need to do is actually be a bit more clever about the type of transaction that we carry out. Okay, so this is how, um, so in that example, you can see that um, power failure, for example, or hardware failure for the, um, for the network, as well as poor software, okay, can cause those, those transactions um, to basically give up free money to you. So let's think of it, about this and how actually we can rectify that. So even if um, there is a um, power failure or hardware failure, you still end up with correct transactions. So here I am, I've got my balance of £250. I draw £100 from branch one. What branch one is actually doing is sending the transaction itself minus £100 to, um, to the uh, head office. So in the meantime, the network goes down, you go to branch two, branch two stores that is and now you've minus 150 pounds and then branch three you've taken out another 150 pounds so when the network comes back online the branches start submitting their transactions to the data the main database well then we know that branch one minus 100, 100 pounds branch two minus 150 pounds and then branch three minus 150 okay so better software design in this case Okay, with more intelligence and the actual transactions that need to be carried out can help to mitigate some of that um, uh, the problems that could be caused by hardware failure or power failure, etc. All right, so you should you should now know what transaction processing is, and you should be able to talk about the impact of transaction processing on data integrity.